Right, hello, and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine, and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Joseph Fung, who is up in Toronto, Canada. How are you doing, Joseph? Really well, John. So looking forward to this conversation. Yeah, and uh, and Joseph is the is the founder um, and CEO of Uvaro, mm -hmm. and uh, this and you also run this uh, uh, the Seller's Journey podcast. And what and as CEO of Uvaro, of Uvaro you help um, people uh, learn the skills and and reskill and career transition, especially in things like sales. And what we wanted to talk today about was technology sales mm -hmm. because um there's a lot of jobs going away sales jobs going away in a lot of other areas and, and industries and all of that and technology obviously continues to grow and exponentially grow so there's really great opportunities there but some people get very kind of leery or nervous about getting into technology sales if they don't come from a technology background or they've never sold technology before that's totally it and the interesting thing is people get excited about tech and software as an emerging space and everyone thinks they need to learn to code and that couldn't be further from the truth because most companies, they only spend 15, 16, 17% of their budget on R&D, but they spend 25, 35% on sales and marketing. There's way more opportunity there. So we help sales professionals learn the language, the flow of tech sales, and then introduce them to rapidly growing tech companies uh, and launch amazing careers. Yeah. So, so when you when you talk to um, you know the people who come to your boot camps and your, and your classes and that, um, what is the first thing? What are they apart from you know maybe they think they need to learn how to code and they realize they you know they don't. What is what is the, what is the thing that they fear most about getting into technology sales? Is it? I mean, because you know, you have sometimes people think, well, it's very, it's a very youthful, youth dominated. It's a very like you know area where it's it's very vibrant. Maybe it's maybe culturally it's not the right fit for me. All of these things. I mean, people have a lot of different ideas about it. So, what are some of the things that when you talk to people that maybe preconceptions or misconceptions they have about? selling or about joining a technology company? So you hit the nail on the head. That's absolutely the most common, that sense of, do I belong? And so many of our, our students, they actually come from a place where they've been really, you know, really challenged in that. They've applied to, to dozens and dozens of jobs and maybe they haven't received an interview, they haven't received a call back and, and they've been successful before and they don't know why the doors aren't opening. And so we spend a lot of time talking about kind of language, convention, how to apply. But the other big thing that this, I love this part, is that people come in with this negative idea about sales sometimes. They're like, I don't know if I want to do this. People say I'll be good at sales, but do I really want to do it? And in technology, because so much is subscription based, it's not about dragging a customer fighting over the line. It's about finding a problem you really solve. And when people realize it's about solving a real problem that makes someone happy for life, that's how I win as a sales rep. It's like it shatters all these stereotypes. It's it's so great to watch. Yeah, and I and I think the other thing, Joseph, as well, that's very true in scenarios like this is that um, is that people think, oh well, it's so hard to sell technology nowadays because the buyers got all this information, they're tech savvy, all of this. However, things have gotten to the point where most buyers are overloaded with information. They have got so many choices, they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And the reality is that a good common sense salesperson who can really focus in, as you said, on, on their problems and help them guide them through this this forest of information and all these solutions, you know, it will be rewarded for it. And that's a skill that is cross industry, right? Totally. We see, so some of those fundamental sales skills, can you follow a process? Can you uh, tell really good stories? We see people coming out of real estate, coming out of fitness centers, coming out of hospitality. We have people coming, coming out of the oil fields. We have one student learned how do you adhere to a process really well? Because if you don't do that well in the oil field, someone might die. And when he comes in right. and sees what does it take to run a sales cycle, he's like, oh, this is easy. And now he's selling HR software from the safety of his living room. Like, mm -hmm. you, you can't go wrong with that. No, no, absolutely. And I think people underestimate sometimes because, I mean, I mean, back in the uh, back in the day, I mean, people who came from the 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 printer 
printer sales background. Mm -hmm. um, those big companies, I mean, lots of them went on to so many other industries because they learned good fundamental selling skills and how to fill up and how to follow a process, as you say. And their skills were completely transferable to so many other industries. And I think it's it's the same exactly what you said. I think sometimes people look at don't look hard enough at the experience they have to learn about how how much they have to offer. But the reality is most tech companies are pretty terrible at hiring sales. That's a large part of it. We, I, I say that. I've been a tech founder multiple times and mm -hmm. I, I'm the worst. We all are. We write these job descriptions that say, we're B2B software, so you need to have four years B2B software and you need to know our tools. Uh, Pipeliner, HubSpot, whatever we use, you need to know them all. Like every sales rep comes fully baked. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you're looking at these job descriptions, all you get is this giant list of bullets of systems with odd names that you don't know. And it sets up all these barriers. So few companies actually say, we want people who have good customer acumen, who can tell a good story, who can follow our process. And I think there's a, it's as much about helping bring people into the fold as it is about helping companies hire better too. Yeah, no, I, I think that's, I think that's a great point. And I do think that, uh, that yeah, the, the the hiring processes of most technology companies is terrible, and you're correct. That's a I mean, mostly it probably switches off um, ninety percent of potentially great applicants when you list all these things that people that that you say people need to have in order to uh, to sell. And to be honest, often in those cases, the selling skills seem to be buried somewhere near the bottom as a kind of afterthought. Mm -hmm. That's totally it. People say, hey, we we want you to know our industry and our customer and and all of our tools and they often don't even mention selling skills. It's it's yeah. kind of terrible, but uh, I mean, hey, that's the problem we're solving. So I suppose I yeah. should thank people for giving us a really tough problem to solve. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, absolutely. And um, and I think, I mean, in general, let's face it, whether it's technology or otherwise, hiring is still is still something that very, very few people do well. I mean, I always tell people, I'll hold my hands up and I say, I probably, I have, sure, in my career, I've made more bad hires and good hires. Um, and I don't think, and I think that's true of most people just because of the, the the way hiring is and how difficult it can be. But let's talk about some success stories. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe some people that you have worked with who came from um, maybe very niche industries, but then managed to go over to technology sales and actually flourish. I mean, some stories like that would be amazing for people to hear. Sure. Uh, I'll give you one of my favorites. Um, one of our students, he's based in New York. And the only job he ever had, 20 years, he was a pastor and wow. came to the point where he recognized, hey, to make the impact I want, to, to lead the life that I want, to make the difference I want, I need to do something different. And when he enrolled in the program, he, he came to us about five weeks in. He's like, I've never felt more human because he's now learning how to not just systematize what he's doing, but learn how to find the right problem, do discovery the right way and solve those problems. He's working with a security software company, helping companies run their business much more securely, achieve things they never thought possible at a fraction of the cost and doing incredible work, not just with their customers, but with an amazing startup. And mm -hmm. I mean, talk about a career shift and he has done incredible, incredible work. The best yeah. part was because of the way our boot camp works, the company he worked with got to see what he did before he landed the role. So they got the better hiring experience, he got the better role, and, and now they're just crushing it together. Yeah, that, that's an amazing, an amazing example. And I think it's it's also there's there's some great messages in there. Number one, I mean, yeah, he was a pastor, but guess what is a pastor? What what is part of the essential uh skill set of a pastor? And that is communication and connecting with people right otherwise you're not going to have much of a congregation right if uh, yeah. if you're not good at connecting and uh, and building relationships with people and that's really at the essence of what sales is asking really good discovery questions uncovering the source of the problem building really good rapport like all these things and i mean if you think about how hard it is to run a congregation keep that sense sure. of consistency i mean you have to build and run processes. And if you get a CRM to do it, that's a heck of a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And you have to be on all, every time you, uh, mm -hmm. with your congregants, whether on mass or individually, you have to be on, which is the same, 
exactly. uh, sales. Um, do you have any other any other examples of people who made radical uh, career changes? Yeah. So another one that comes to mind, really interesting situation. Uh, guy moves from India to San Diego. So he's in, in your neck of the woods um, mm -hmm. due to visa challenges, had to leave the country. So he has all this background in operations and logistics, moves to San Diego, is told he needs to leave the country. So while he's moving to Toronto, enrolls in our program. So he hasn't even graduated and he moves country, of course, right before winter. Great, mm -hmm. great timing. And mm -hmm. Through the process, because he knew he was in our operations, he looked at a couple of roles that were a little bit more operations oriented, and we saw from his work that he could do even more uh, in terms of his sense of systems, process. He was very meticulous in making sure he did what he said he was going to do. And I mean, if you're a sales rep and you do what you said you were going to do, that's huge. He ended up landing an amazing role, wicked tech company in the data science space. Uh, crushed his first month's quota, did 400% of his first month's quota. So of course they raised the quota on it. And then month two did 300%. <laughs> and just incredible. I mean, I love seeing him apply the lessons, but it's all about that diligence, figure out the system and then work it. Yeah. And I think that's a, that's a great point there to, to make is that, um, yeah, you may, the, the company that you want to go to or that you, you see the job in, it may have a very complex technology, who knows? But the fact is that uh, understanding how to, how to position that, that technology, understanding the kind of problems it solves. I mean, all of this is just, it's just regular analytics that, that any kind of smart or common sense person can do. So again, I think there's, I think sometimes people equate selling technology with the complexity of the technology and they're, they're, they're so different. It is, it's so different. And one last story, I promise. Uh, one of our, That's great. Our, she's a newcomer to the country, incredible professional, worked in foreign, uh, foreign exchange, finance, on the side was an international competitor in heavy lifting. I mean, we're talking about competing on the world stage. So an incredible athlete on top of being an incredible professional, mm -hmm. but because she had no local experience, wasn't getting any interviews, wasn't getting any opportunities. As she was going through our program, her outreach work, her diligence, she was amazing. Like all the skills you learn as an athlete, the training, the practice, the deliberate improvement, she applied it directly to her sales learning landed her role by week 10. So before she even graduated within a couple of months, got a promotion. And again, just amazing her colleagues because she has everything it takes, that fire in the belly, understanding complex systems. But sometimes you just need the language, little things like yeah. in software, we say SaaS, we don't say SAS, little things like that mm -hmm. trip you up in an interview. And sometimes you just need the right tools to, to make it through them. Yeah, no, and I think that's a fantastic point. Sometimes it is learning the language of the industry that you're going to be selling in, and it's not, and it's not that complicated once you, once you understand the languages used, the terminology, and all that, and you can at least sound like you you fit in because the rest is is eminently, eminently learnable. And I think you touched on a great point there. Again, I I just think that sometimes people don't recognize the skills that they have. As you said, this person was an athlete. They could bring those skills to bear in the job. I, I was fortunate in the past to hire some people who were former, I learned or learned um, quickly not to ever call anybody an ex-Marine, former US Marines. Um, and again, people who absolutely very operations focused you know very disciplined in everything they do um i think i often think it's a case of people need to look look take a quick look back at what they've done in the in the past and their skill sets and realize that they are applicable to a, a sales job in technology it's totally it and most tech companies if you if you talk to the vp there the ceo they, they recognize that they say it but in the urgency of that moment it's hard to make the call to give someone that opportunity, if you could keep looking for someone who's already fully baked. Mm -hmm. And what that lets us do is every month we get about a thousand applicants and we filter them down to those 30, 40, 50 people who really have the experience, the, the skills to go through that program. And then we get to pair them up with amazing companies. So we, we de-risk a lot of that. And if you're gonna talk to uh, uh, people who are Marines, professional athletes, mm -hmm. all of that. It's way easier to give people those opportunities when you get a chance to talk to a thousand of them. Uh, and so it's fun. We get to transform lives and do it at scale. 
Yeah, and and as we said at the outset of this, I mean, the technology uh, sector is the one that's going to continue to grow and grow, and it's going to there's going to be fantastic opportunities for people. Other industries maybe are going to fade away and not have so many opportunities. So this is a great time to look at career transitioning, and especially after the year that we've been through and all of that. Oh, I mean, yeah. there's there's going to be pent up demand. There's going to be startups coming. There's going to be new technologies that have been that people have been developing uh, on you know undercover during this period. All of that. There's going to be so many opportunities. So now is a fantastic time to pivot and get into technology sales. Um, so before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you, what you do, and what your company does, and and how you help people. Sure. So we run a sales training program specifically focused on tech. So the sales motions, mm -hmm. the messaging, the tools, you know, what tech companies use. Um, it's a 12 week program and it's live online. So anyone from anywhere can participate. It's two hours a day for 12 weeks. Uh, the part that's really unique is we don't charge tuition until you graduate and land a job. So we really are opening up opportunities in a way that traditional education can't. And we open up a new class every month. So there's always an opportunity to participate and we pair the curriculum with career coaching and live introductions. So that as you're coming out of the program, you're set up to pursue your own job hunt, work with one of our partners, work with a company that we've introduced you to and our students, our graduates on average are landing a new role 17 days after they graduate. And on average, they're doubling their income. So it's a, a fantastic, we align our values to theirs and it makes a fantastic win-win situation. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Okay, the company is called Uvaro. All of Joseph and Uvaro's information will be below this video. Um, I would absolutely encourage you to take a look at this. And particularly if you're, if you're considering a career change and you're considering getting into technology sales. I mean, you've heard the stories, you've heard the, uh, the, the anecdotes about people look doubling and tripling their revenue. It's a great sector to be in. It's going to be where the jobs are. You might as well get in on the action now. So I would highly recommend that you check out Uvaro. That's the letter U-V-A-R-O. All right, listen, Joseph, thank you very much for joining us today. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. I will see you all again for another interview very soon. Thank you. Yeah.